In this video, we look at estimation and confidence intervals, which is part of the AI HL only course in topic four, statistics and probability. Okay, to open this video, I'd like to go through a simple example to try to set the scene of what we're working towards here, which is building a confidence interval. Let's say I wanted to find the average height or the mean height of all IBDP students around the world. That's roughly about 300,000, let's say. Now, obviously, it's not practical for me to start jumping on planes and visiting every single school and getting my tape measure out and measuring all 300,000 students. It's, it's not practical to find mu, which is the population mean. So instead, what I can do is take a sample. And let's say I sample 30 students nearby to me, and I found that the average height, which we call X bar, the sample mean, was 165 centimetres. Well, this 165 centimetres, the sample mean, is a pretty good estimate for mu, the population mean, but it won't be mu exactly. That'll depend, that'll depend on the types of students that I have sampled. But what I can do with this sample mean is use it to build a confidence interval for mu. So let's just have a look at this interval here. I could build a confidence interval and say that the population mean, in other words, the average height of all students around the world, is between this interval from 160 centimetres up to 170 centimetres. And attached to this interval is some sort of level of confidence. Usually the numbers are probably 90% confident or 95% confident or 99% confident. They're the three most common, but it can be any really level of confidence. Uh, it could be 83, it could be 97, but usually you'll see sort of 90, 95 and 99. So I could say here, and I haven't actually done the calculations, but let's just say it is 90%. I could say I'm 90% confident based off my sample that the population mean lies within 160 centimetres up to 170 centimetres. So that's what we're working towards here, building a confidence interval with a level of confidence attached to it. Okay, before I go into the theory, I just want to touch on the notation. Um, for this particular concept and other statistics uh, concepts, the notation really varies across different textbooks and different online publications. So just be careful of that. It's easy to get confused. Sometimes you'll see S or sometimes you'll see SN or sometimes you'll see SN minus one. What I have here is the official IB notation. So as per their syllabus guys, these are the symbols that they use for all of these important values here. So it's good to probably just write these down or, or, or have them saved somewhere and refer back to these when you start to see some of these symbols in the formula. So for example, SN minus one, sometimes some textbooks actually have SN for that. So just be careful and understand the proper notation that we're going to use here. Okay, let's have a look at the theory. As I mentioned in, uh, in this example here, what we're trying to do is to estimate an interval for mu, the population mean, with a level of confidence attached, let's just say 90%, based off sample data. What we, so what we're trying to do is to find an interval with a lower limit and an upper limit. And the way that we find that is by going X bar plus a margin of error to find the upper limit. That's what the right-hand side will be and X bar subtract the same margin of error to find the lower limit. So the logical next question is, well, I know how to find X bar, the sample mean, that's just taking the average of a sample. How do I find this margin of error? Well, there's two types of questions that you'll encounter in AIHL. One type is when the population variance or the population standard deviation is given. So the sample, uh, the, sorry, the variance is known. And in that case here, we use this formula here to find the margin of error involving Z scores or involving a normal distribution. But some questions you won't be given the population variance or the population standard deviation. So we need to use this formula here involving T scores or the T distribution. Now I won't go through all the information of how these two formulas work, but just briefly, uh, this left-hand formula involves Z scores of, of a value of alpha over two, where alpha is one subtract a confidence interval. So for example, at a 90% confidence interval, that'll be one subtract 0.9 or 10%. So this would be 10% uh, on two, multiplied by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And over here on this second formula here, this will be a T score. And there's two important values here for the T score. 
Uh, the first one is V, which is the number of degrees of freedom, the sample size subtract one, and then also alpha on two, the same as over here, multiplied by this N minus one, sorry, S of N minus one, which is the unbiased estimate of the population standard deviation, because of course, we don't have the population standard deviation in this type of question, divided by the square root of the sample size again. So these two formulas here look a little bit intimidating, but once you practice a few questions of both, they're really not too bad. Okay, let's just have a quick look now at two IB exam questions involving both knowing the population variance and not knowing the population variance and looking at how do we actually go ahead and create a confidence interval. Okay, this first example here involves the average midday temperature reading in Sydney, Australia during the three summer months, so approximately 90 days. In this question here, we are given the population standard deviation, 2.3. So therefore, in the margin of error calculations, we're going to use this left-hand formula involving Z scores. So Z of alpha on two, uh, multiplied by the standard deviation, 2.3, divided by the sample size, root five. So we find this margin of error of 2.016. In this first block of working here, we find X bar, which is simply the average of the sample of the five days that were taken. And then to find the confidence interval, and in this case here, this is a 95% confidence interval, we go X bar plus the margin of error, X bar subtract the margin of error, and we get our interval here. So from 31.1 degrees Celsius up to 35.1 degrees Celsius. So we are 95% confident that the average midday temperature reading in Sydney for the all of the summer months, so all 90 days, are gonna be up within this interval here. Okay, so that's the first example. Let's have a look at another example where the population variance or the population standard deviation is not given. Okay, in this next example here, we have the weights of pharmaceutical tablets and a sample of 18 tablets were taken. We are given the average weight of the sample, 3.97, so that'll be our X bar, 3.97, but we aren't given the population variance or standard deviation, we're given the sample standard deviation. So therefore, sigma squared or the population variance is unknown, so we use this right-hand formula here involving t-scores to find the margin of error. And that's what I did here to find a margin of error of 0.0776. I then add that to x bar to find the upper limit of the interval and subtract that from x bar to find the lower limit of the interval. In this case here, again, this is a 95% confidence interval. So in conclusion for this question, we are 95% confident that mu the average weight of all of the tablets will lie within the interval 3.89 and 4.05. Okay, that was a quick introduction to estimation and confidence intervals. I recommend practicing some of these questions over in the RV question banks, particularly around identifying which of these margin of error formulas to use, and then go ahead and practicing how to find the margin of error for both, and that is estimation and confidence intervals.